Let's have quiet on Saturday. One, two, three, four. Play now and please. Play now and please. Talking about the other business plans. Welcome to our fifth episode of Late Night with Liz. I just took an antibody test. Turns out I'm 100% running out of jokes. I'm also your host, Liz Sutphin. It's been another crazy week here in quarantine. Apparently, it's May. This past week, New York State announced that if you cannot keep a six foot social distance, you must wear a face mask. This is very important. And I've been making sure to take it very seriously. New York City has announced that its subway system will be closing overnight for disinfecting for the duration of the pandemic. New York's rat population is rejoicing as it can now get its full eight hours of sleep without your drunk stumbling home on the L train at 3 a.m. Traveling south, the great state of Georgia will be issuing driver's licenses to people who already possess a learner's permit without requiring a road test. Hope you all called Geico because 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on that 15-year-old who just rear-ended you on the freeway. Across the pond, The Guardian, England's premier newspaper, has reported that Germany may impose a singing ban, stating, quote, singing is as deadly as coughing. The last time the British press tried to stop me from singing was when the Telegraph reviewed me as shrill and disappointing. And that's a quarren fact. Fortunately, England already has someone on the ground in Germany who knows a little something about slaying people with her voice. Louise Alder is joining us tonight. She is a world-renowned soprano and my absolute favorite stage sister. So sit back, grab yourself a moisturizing sheet mask, and let's go have some fun. thrilled to introduce our guest this evening, Louise Alder. Hi, Louise. Hi. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I'm really excited for our conversation and so it's gonna be great. Louise and I met at Opera Frankfurt when we were doing Xerxes. I was playing Romilda, you were playing Atalanta, and then for the uh, revival we did a little switcheroo. So that was pretty exciting. Uh, since then we've worked together quite a few times in different countries. And yeah, I wanna thank I, you for uh, coming on. Thank you. My pleasure. Where are you right now? It's hard to I keep track of you. Currently in Frankfurt, where I live. And who are you with right now? Well, I actually live with two Dutchmen. And who are the two Dutchmen? My boyfriend, a horn player, uh, Steph, who plays Steph. in the Australian Opera, and um, a slightly hairier Dutchman called Henk. Oh my god. It took a little while to locate him. Ah, oh, he's so big and floofy. So you're doing fine. You're in good hands. I mean, I think we're fine. He takes good. care of me. Don't you? Bye. You, I mean, you travel a lot. And since I've known you, you, you've always been all over the place. What is, uh, what is being home like for you right now? It's obviously strange because it's enforced. Um, right. I think that we all uh, so desperately want to go home when we have been away and if we're having a rubbish time on a, on a project or something and, or we're not enjoying the city or wherever or it's, mm -hmm. there's a big time difference between where you are and where your loved ones are yeah. we all yearn to go home and now that we're all at home <laughs> not by choice uh, <laughs> It's, it's interesting. I think everyone's going up and down with it because depending on whether you get any 
financial help or whether your uh, companies that you were supposed to be working for have treated you well or not. Also slotting back or trying to find a routine with the people that you live with that you normally have a lot of independence from in a positive way. Um, mm. It's a very big change, I think, is the answer. Very interesting because part of, <laughs> cheers, I feel the same. Part of part of me anyway, is happy, so happy to be around people I love. And the other part of me misses so genuinely the independence. And it's a, uh, yeah, it's, it's complicated. <laughs> I like that you find balance in your work and also like your happy life. And that is something, this is a big thing for young people. They might think they have to do all or nothing. Actually, I think that that's really important for health. I think mm -hmm. that if you ignore the things that make you happy as a human and you only concentrate really in a driven manner on your singing, of course you need that and especially as a soprano, you need to be very focused, but we have to be happy. Even when you are working, the other parts of your life are valid too. The parts of your personal life, the parts of your life that you enjoy, it's going to make your enjoyment of your work so much more profound and that's something I think you set a great example of. The thing is, well, if you don't have any experience in your personal life, how can you be expected to act anything realistically on stage? I think that's fair. You truly, genuinely are. One of the most amazing actors and interpreters I have ever seen or worked with. And I would like to know if you have any advice for young people about standing up for and making choices about music and characters in a rehearsal process? I think it's hard. I think it's particularly hard for young people and even harder for young women. I think you have to be a really good um, negotiator of people. I haven't always found the right way to do it and I am absolutely the first person to hold my hand hands up about that it really does sometimes sometimes personalities clash but generally you can find a way to speak to someone and appeal to them saying that creatively you're quite blocked unless you understand why you're doing something unless it's not necessarily that you need to agree with it because we are taught in the German system to do some crazy things you do have to understand why when you are informed and when you've done your homework and when you've sort of figured out your character in yourself, which is something that we take months doing, Absolutely. those opinions and the opinions that you have when they come from a genuine place are valid and you have a lot to bring to the table. Confidence is so important. What, watching you on stage, it's very clear you know exactly what you're doing. You have a lot of conviction and being with you in rehearsal that's also very clear. You need to find somebody who both influences you and challenges you in equal measure. And I'm wondering if you have anybody in your life who has been that to you. I think it's really healthy to have, to learn things from other voice types in their performance manner and in how they use their voices and how they are in rehearsal rooms. Um, and also because they're doing different repertoire, different types of characters, because we lighter sopranos tend to do, you know, the little village um, <laughs> floozies um, and uh, lucky us for playing such amazing roles. But it is really great to look at other people who are playing queens <gasps> and <laughs> devils. Oh my God. <laughs> I think that through the Frankfurt um, system, through the German system, you get to watch many people who have mm. been in the, in the business for years and get to know them because you work on multiple projects with them. Do you have a favorite role that you have played? I think probably Sophie. Mm -hmm. I love her so much because she's so spunky and she's so um, cool. Uh, she's a bit ditzy, but in a sort of, I know what I want way and I get yeah. that. I really I like her. I always to be very smart. I feel similarly about Servinetta. I'm like, that's woman is so woke, like, so complete. Strauss wrote some of the most unbelievable music for female voices. And he really understood how they could intertwine and how they could rip your heart out while you're singing it and while you're listening to it. It's extraordinary. Oh, it's you have been 
one of the biggest influences in my career, if my career were to go on for another 30 years or if it were to end today, I would feel the same. And I encourage everybody to find somebody who can inspire you, who can teach you, who can challenge you. If there is one thing that we can learn from each other, it's that we can learn from each other. So Louise, is there anything that we can plug for you here on Late Night with Liz that you are doing virtually? Well, I have been, uh, since the beginning of this week, I've been doing some online coaching and sort of career advice. I have really enjoyed meeting lots of, lots of different people who are interested in knowing a little bit about the audition circuit in Europe. We've, we've been working a little bit at some singing things if they've wanted to, and I've given some I hopefully helpful, constructive um, uh, opinions about their singing and their performances um, in a sort of terribly safe, I hope, safe space. I will link your Instagram here. I also want to mention that Louise has two <laughs> albums, two solo albums, which you can enjoy from the safety and comfort of your own home please. They are available on all streaming services. Or if you're like me, you can go ahead and buy them. I own them both. That's a core in fact. Thank you so much for joining me. I had a great time with you. You're fabulous. Oh, thank uh, you. How are you, Liz? I'm going to give you a cheers. cheers. <laughs> I hope I get to see you soon. Bye. Me too. During this time at home, the opera industry has been looking for ways to update its marketing techniques. Here at Late Night with Liz, I think we found just the solution. In a world full of cruel landlords, struggling artists, and bustling cafes, six friends will do whatever it takes to not pay for anything. It's Paris in the 1830s where tuberculosis <laughs> runs wild and candles are the sexiest thing in town. Toys will be so y'all. Lovers will quarrel. You take your broken shoe and the waltz you came in on. And one sad old man will pick up the bill. You got a carriage here for Bill? With rent on the line and life hanging in the balance, prized possessions will be pawned in this tear jerking opera from the team that brought you Madame Butterfly. Le Monde says, Wow, very. Puccini's La Boheme. Coming soon to an opera house near you. Thank you for joining us tonight. I had a lot of fun and I hope this show is continuing to put a smile on your face. Stay safe. Stay home. Stay cautious when driving in Florida. Nope. <laughs> I mean, do that too. <laughs> Stay cautious while driving in Georgia. And I'll see you next time. Hmm.